Well, welcome to my living room. This is not how I ever expected to do church, and um, actually I'm quite nervous about it. But today is World Water Day, March the 22nd. For thousands of years, indigenous people have walked in this land on their own country. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives, and we acknowledge the Beothic and the Mi'kmaq people, past and present, and their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. And I welcome you to virtual worship. This is an experiment for me, as for a number of my colleagues. And let us begin by lighting our Christ candle. The oceans of this precious planetary jewel we call our home, our one. They greet each other in countless places, sharing waters and releasing them. Waters once called Atlantic are sooner or later Pacific or Arctic. Waters once swirling around our northern lands will or have graced the shores of India and the Antarctica. The sacred waters that we call water journeys through three, sorry, the sacred gift that we call water journeys through streams and river, sky and earth to find communion with itself in other waters. In its search for union and oneness, it calls to the human community to also seek communion. Always water is a sacred gift with the sacred trust given to it by the Creator to bring life, healing, and transformation. These are water's instructions from the Creator. Beautiful and powerful, even ancient yet ever new. It relies upon us to care for and protect it, enable it to carry out the Creator's instructions. We remember water is a sacred gift that connects all life. It is a shared legacy, a public trust, and a collective responsibility. We do care. We will respond. And let us pray. Creator God, you give, we give you thanks for this precious gift of water. We remember the instructions you gave to water, and we long to ensure that your sacred gift will forever bring life, healing, and wholeness to all of creation. Amen. Come to the water, all who thirst. We come to drink, deep, to drink deeply from the river of life. Come to the water, all who are weary. We come to rest in the quiet pools of God's love. Come to the water, all you who long for justice. We come to be renewed in God's ever-flowing stream. For God is here among us, washing away the dust and grime of our lives and pouring out our spirit on all who thirst. Let's worship God together and we pray. Awesome and gracious God, you who are the power that brings us to life and the spirit that sustains us, we come together in this hour in a wider search for truth and purpose. In this quest, may we greet one another with open hearts and minds, inspire each other to consider new questions and seek deeper meaning and cultivate both wisdom and compassion. Let all who enter this sacred place find comfort in this community. May we become what is in our power to become. Amen. Now, whether you take what is written in the Bible as fact, metaphor, myth, or story, listen to these words now for the meaning they hold for you on this day. And I've chosen four scripture readings. 
each dealing in some way with water. And the first reading comes from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning on the first day. The second reading comes from Exodus 17, verses 2 through 7. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt, to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massah and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? The third reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 12, and it's part of the lectionary for this week. As he was walking along, he saw a blind man, a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, he was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. And the final reading comes from Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, which, with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. May these words help us learn from the past and listen for God's word today. Fourth century BC, Chinese philosopher Shang Tzu wrote, Water is the blood of the earth, and water flows through its muscles and veins. It is accumulated in heaven and earth and stored in various things of the world. 
It comes from in it comes forth in metal and stone and is concentrated in living things. Therefore, it is said that water is something spiritual. Water is precious. Water is everything. Water is life. These words are part of the baptismal liturgy that I use. Today, March 22nd, is World Water Day. It is a chance for us to celebrate this most precious of gifts. The Bible is filled with stories which remind us that water is a blessing, the source of strength and the source of life. Today's reading, a very small portion of the possible choices, include references to water from Genesis to Revelation. Waters of creation waters in the desert, waters of healing, waters of life. We remember the waters around us, the oceans, the lakes, rivers and streams, the rain falling outside today, and even the banks of snow around us. Water covers approximately 71% of the earth. We humans are made up of about 70% water, all life originated in the oceans, and our whole food chain depends upon water. Science fiction writer Arthur C. Clarke noted, how inappropriate to call this planet Earth when it is clearly ocean. The quest for God is often connected with water. The quest for sacred water is not limited to Christianity. Many of our best examples of sacred water stories come from the Hebrew portion of the Bible, such as those stories we read today of creation and of Exodus. Muslims depict God as the one who sat upon the waters. Hindu holy sites are usually located near water. Buddhists offer water at shrines to achieve serenity, clarity, and purity. And in many native and indigenous traditions, water represents fertility and renewal. It is our job now to be stewards of the world's water. It is a finite resource, not to be squandered by polluting it with plastics and toxins, not to be hoarded by some, but to be shared by all. On October 28th, no, sorry, on the 28th of July, 2010, the United Nations General Assembly explicitly recognized the human right to water and sanitation and acknowledged that clean drinking water and sanitation are essential to the realization of all human rights. In the story from John, the disciples asked Jesus, who sinned, this man or his parents? The understanding of illness as a punishment was a popular one, as no one knew about germs back then. Jesus used the simplest of things to heal the blind man, mud and water. We are still using the simplest of things to minimize the spread of the COVID-19 virus as we wash our hands, probably more times a day than we ever did even a week ago. And what do we use? Soap and water. The Bible begins with God's Spirit sweeping over the water and ends with the river of the water of life that heals and washes away sorrow. Water in the beginning, water in the end. Let us protect this precious gift given for all. And let us pray. Birthed in the water of the womb, we cannot ignore the polluting water that sickens and kills. Washed in the abundance of water, we cannot ignore the water robbing industries that deplete our aquifers. Thirst quenched with clean water, we cannot ignore the mining, fracking and oil exploration putting communities and ecosystems at risk. 
moved across rivers, lakes, and oceans. We cannot ignore the rising sea level engulfing island states or the devastation of global warming storms. Reconciled in the waters of baptism, we cannot ignore the violation of treaties, covenants with the first protectors of the watersheds. Sustained by the water of an intricate ecosystem, we cannot ignore our connection to water. Let us be conscious, grateful, mindful, and actively protecting water, the lifeblood of our Creator. Let us also remember those who are ill, the hospital workers, cleaners, admin staff, technicians, nurses, and doctors, the leaders of our country, province, and city, the people who keep going to work so that all can have food, and those who are truly isolated without access to the technology which allows us to meet. May we as neighbors find ways to connect with them. We join these prayers in the Abba prayer, which is written in the spirit of the Lord's prayer. Eternal Spirit, source of all that is and ever shall be, loving parent in whom we discern heaven, may knowledge of your holiness inspire all peoples, and may your commonwealth of peace and freedom flourish on earth until all of humankind heed your call to justice and compassion. May we find the bread that we need for today and for the hurts we cause one another, may we be forgiven in the same measure that we forgive. In times of trial and temptation, help us to be strong. When life seems overwhelming, help us to endure. And thus from the yoke of sin deliver us. May you reign in the power of your human love, now and forever. Amen. I'm not going to be in the church offices very much in the next few days, or maybe even weeks. If you need to contact me, probably the best way is through email at the moment. And you can find me at susan at stjamesuc.org or bipcunitedchurch at gmail.com. And I'll be checking the emails frequently throughout the days. The God we worship is never confined. So go with God, who is found in ordinary and surprising places. Go now from this service of worship to the service of God's people near and far. Refreshed by the living water that Jesus offers to us, listen for the parched voices of the least of these. Search out the dry places and the arid souls. We will become, for them, the spring of living water. And now may the God of surprises bless you. May the Christ of possibilities keep you. And may the spirit of new pathways hold you now and forevermore. Amen.